Lee here. Today we're making a gluten-free Royal Charlotte cake, which apparently became very popular in the most recent days because it was shown in the British Bake Off. I just think it's an odd looking cake and I want to try out to make something odd looking and being tasty at the same time and it looks just like a very tempting challenge to me. And I'm going to make today a Royal Charlotte cake that is so delicious that it will fool everyone to think it's the real deal. founded about the idea of giving a cake a person's name. I mean, I talked about it in the Charlotte cake. This one though takes it to a complete different level. Just think about, would you mind, could I have please a slice of Royal Charlotte? And he would like to have please a slice of Royal Andrews. And yeah, a cup of tea would be nice with it as well. Apparently a Royal Charlotte cake is a sponge cake filled with jam, rolled up, sliced and then filled with a mousse and it looks very much like a brain. A friend of mine pointed out to me since it does look like a brain it would be a great cake for Halloween. Hmm. It is a complicated cake, it will take you a little bit of time so plan ahead for it. So let's get started on a Royal Charlotte cake and the first thing I want to do is get started on the strawberry mousse. What I do like though with anything with fresh fruit is to have this really nice intense fruit flavor. If it's a strawberry cake, it should taste like real strawberries. And if it's a mango cake, it should be having a real taste of mango. So what I normally do is I create almost like a compote. And in this case, I'm gonna do it with frozen strawberries because unfortunately our garden strawberries are not ready yet. So I'm gonna have to go to the supermarket. Here are my frozen strawberries. They're still a little bit frozen. So I'm gonna defrost them in the microwave and then I'm gonna blend them and cook them in. And I normally use like 340 grams of strawberries, which is around two thirds of a pound. I mean, technically you can't go wrong with strawberries. So even if you wanna add half a pound in it, go for it. And I always like to make some extra just in case. And if I don't need it, I just freeze it for another strawberry cake. So here are my defrosted strawberries and I'm gonna blend them. I'm gonna pour my blended strawberries now in this pot. So I'm gonna reduce now the strawberry puree to really evaporate the water. I mean, strawberry is a fruit which has a very high water content. Well, actually a lot of fruits do. And what I really wanna do is just to have a much more intense strawberry flavor. So my sponge cake is done. I took it out of the oven and I let it cool down for 10 to 20 minutes, but I still want it to be warm, warm to touch, because otherwise it becomes very hard to roll the Swiss roll. And the filling for the Swiss roll will be a strawberry jam, which you can buy in pretty much any store. I'm going to use about 200 gram. With my cake spatula, I'm going to spread it as evenly as possible. I think I need a bit more jam, so think about 200, 250, kind of depending which baking sheet you're using. What I really want to look for is that I have enough coverage. And then I'm going to start rolling up my Swiss roll. And unfortunately the dough broke a little bit but that's okay for this purpose because I'm gonna cut it in a bit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll it up in the kitchen towel. So I'm gonna let this cool down. If I wanna speed up the cooling down, I might put it in the fridge. If you wanna learn how to do the proper method for rolling up a Swiss roll, check it out in my Bouche Noel video. So the bottom layer of my cake is now done as well. It's the same recipe I'm using for my Swiss roll. So in the total, it's about one and a half of my vanilla sponge cake recipe. It could probably be one because the Swiss roll was a little bit too thick, which made it much harder to roll. I'm gonna release the cake. For that, I'm gonna use my cake spatula, quick run it around the sides of my cake pan and flip it over. And here's my bottom layer for the Charlotte cream cake. And I'm gonna let the bottom layer cool down as well. Here's the reduced strawberry puree. It took about 30 minutes or so and I let it cool down. If you want to intensify the flavor of the strawberries even more so, what you can do is add a little bit of balsamic vinegar. I'm not gonna taste now the strawberry puree because depending how sweet and ripe the strawberries are, you may need more or less balsamic vinegar. That is really a strong, nice strawberry flavor. And I'm gonna add a little bit of vanilla extract as well. The puree is a little bit sour and it definitely needs some sugar, but I'm gonna add the sugar when I'm making the mousse. I'm gonna quick strain the strawberry puree to make sure I get all the clumps out. 
and I'm gonna fill this now into a measurement cup just so that I know how much I have. I got around 150 milliliters out of 340 grams of strawberries. I'm gonna get ready to make now the Charlotte filling which will be a cream cheese whipped cream filling with, with the strawberry puree. And I normally like to add some gelatin to the filling just to stabilize it a little bit more. And to make the gelatin, I'm going to start soaking the gelatin granule. And in my Black Forest cake, I show you the reason and why I'm using gelatin to stabilize anything with whipped cream. And sprinkle one package of gelatin granules over the water and let it sit for five minutes to get absorbed by the gelatin granules. In the meantime, I'm going to whip 500 milliliters of heavy cream to a soft peak. I'm gonna pour it so I don't wanna get it too stiff. You can see the heavy cream is still pretty liquid. I'm going to transfer my heavy cream to an empty bowl because I need my mixing bowl to whip up my Philadelphia cream cheese and my sugar. I'm gonna measure about 250 grams of cream cheese. I'm gonna measure 300 grams of sugar. And 300 grams is about one and a half cups of sugar. I wanna make sure the cream cheese is at room temperature to make it much easier to beat the cream cheese. If it's very cold, it's very hard to combine it with the sugar or it takes a little bit longer. I combined now the sugar with the cream cheese. Now I'm gonna add the whipped cream. I'm gonna quick combine now the cream cheese, the sugar, and the softly peaked heavy cream. And I'm gonna take from that mixture about one cup, which I wanna use as sort of a chocolate mousse. And now I'm gonna add my 150 grams of strawberry. And now I'm gonna quickly combine the strawberry to the mousse. Sometimes it's easier to do it by hand, actually. That's a really nice strawberry mousse. Okay, so here's the Swiss roll. It should have cooled down enough. So the recipe talks about covering the bowl with the Swiss roll. And they should be cut in about one centimeters or half an inch. And you can see how you can wedge the cake into some of the holes to get close some of the gaps. So I'm gonna have to melt the gelatin and you can see how well it got absorbed. And the best way to do it is on the stove. It looks like I need a little bit more water. And I quick heated up the gelatin to make sure that all the granules get dissolved. And you can see how smooth the gelatin now is. So I'm going to set it aside again to let it cool down. And I want to look now at the heavy cream which I set aside to make sort of a chocolate mousse. And I'm going to add about one tablespoon of cacao to it. I'm going to use a strainer just to make sure I don't create too many cacao clumps. I'm going to quick do a taste test. You now it has a nice strong chocolate flavor to it. But I want it a little bit more liquid because it will be hard to combine it with the strawberry mousse. So I'm going to add a little bit of heavy cream to it. It's probably around a quarter cup. Give it another good stir and then I'm going to set it aside while I'm finishing the mousse. I'm checking on the gelatin. Gelatin is still a little bit warm. So I'm going to add about a quarter cup of heavy cream. I'm going to whisk it while I'm doing it to avoid lumps from forming. It's now room temperature. It's very close to the temperature of the mousse, so it's fine that I add it to it. And now I'm quick going to combine it. So I'm going to add now the strawberry mousse into the cake. And what I want to do is create some chocolate clumps in there. So now I can pour that in. And I will carefully mix under the chocolate mousse before I'm gonna cover the cake with my cake bottom. Here's my Royale Charlotte Swiss Roll Cake. It has been sitting in the fridge for four or five hours. The mousse should be settled and I'm gonna flip it now out of the form and check how it's gonna look like. This cake bottom is a little bit too small, but it will do the trick. So I'm gonna flip the cake over and I hope it will release or not. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna take my cake spatula. So here's my small cake spatula and I'm gonna try to run that past the cake. Hopefully it helps to loosen it up enough. Yep, here we go. I released the cake. Now with my cake spatula, I do like to go over the edges a little bit and remove any extra mousse. So it looks a little bit prettier. And here is my finished Royal Charlotte cake, or how I will call it, my brain cake. Let's give this cake a quick taste test. Mm. 
that's definitely a strawberry cake. A little bit of chocolate is a nice addition. I would probably want a little bit more chocolate, but I'm a chocolateaholic, so... I'm done, literally. That was, that was a lot of work. I hope you enjoyed watching how I made this rain cake, and if you'd like to bake along, or see how I convert other recipes to be gluten-free, subscribe to my channel and check the bell to get notifications about any upcoming videos. And if you have any comments, thoughts, or other recipes for me to try out, please put them below in the comment box. And I'll see you next week. Bye!